the lighting in this room is better than the aquarium. Uh, the animals don't ever see daylight. They're in completely disgusting bare boxes. I mean, this was designed only a few years ago and built a few years ago, and it, it's got the feel of Russia in the 1930s. Um, the show is incredibly loud, and so much so that it actually hurt my ears when I was sitting in the stadium. And the animals, just they have to do the same as all these horrible places, perform these pathetic circus tricks. And tragically, the belugas and the dolphins are even worse off. Uh, the area that the belugas are in, it would be approximately half the size of this room, and it's netted off from the dolphins. Uh, you're not allowed to use cameras. If you get caught, you get into a lot of trouble. Um, I did manage to get some photographs and video. I also found that they were illegally using my footage um, to promote Wild Walker. So at the moment we're investigating how we can prosecute the aquarium. And the dolphins, um, I filmed them lying on the bottom of the tank, just stationary, just lying there um, as a form of stereotypy. I don't know if any of you noticed um, the black marks underneath the chin of one of the orca. That's from a stereotypy, just slamming into the side of the tank all the time. Um, they've got damaged teeth and um, it's one of the worst places that I've been to and um, I think that we all need to really, really do something socially about what's going on there. We need to speak out more. The big call that I'm asking for is for us to put the pressure on SeaWorld because SeaWorld is running around with their hands in their ears saying that they're doing all this conservation and all this wonderful stuff to help wild orca. Well, okay, here's a real simple thing, SeaWorld. No more captures of orca in Russia. It's very, very simple. They should call on the industry. They, have, they belong to professional organisations that say that they have all these wonderful standards. Well, having that standard that there are no more wild captures. And I think if we put that pressure on SeaWorld, it's a very simple ask for them to come out publicly and say there should be no more wild captures of orca and there should be a breeding ban on all facilities around the world. One of the things that we found out was um, through our work in China um, is that uh, there was a document that was provided to us by the officials in China, so this is an official government document, that nine orcas have been imported to China from Russia. Apparently, the CITES authorities in Russia only had records for seven, which is where some of that information in the video about the two animals, you know, they're just not accounted for. They're in China, at least officially, but not, they never left Russia officially. Of those nine, we've um, had reports of precisely none of them being seen. So they're all being held by a single facility called Chimelong, which is near Hong Kong. It's in Guangzhou province, which is near um, Hong Kong. And it's a huge, huge complex. And they have these nine orcas and not one of them's on display. So it's quite possible some or all of them are dead already, but we just don't know. And we've had several people visit Chimelong to try to get at get to the bottom of it and there's just no way to do that. Nobody answers any questions and they are definitely not on display. So we do not know where those nine orcas are, but officially they're in China. Yes, it's very hard to keep track of any animals in Russia because there is no like standards how the government's supposed to keep track of them. So basically in Russia there is no low or any regulations regarding marine mammals and anyone could have the dolphin in their bathtub and no one will do anything about it because there is no law so um being here at the super pod for me is like a most incredible experience that i've ever had today we went out and we saw wild orcas and the orca basically swam under our boat and I was just so happy to be there. But at the same time, I was sad because I knew that in Russia, the situation is completely opposite. 
And if we look at the orcas here, we know they are protected. In Russia, they are in danger. And what I wanted to say is that it doesn't matter where those orcas are, we have to do something about the captures. If any other country, I hope that will never happen, will start capturing orcas, we have to do something about it. It's not about country, it's about the animals that we have to fight for. And in Russia, there is many people who is trying to speak out. From, from this uh, conference, I realized that we have to focus on pursuing the scientists, Russian scientists, to start speaking out. Because that's how it started here. And I think that's the right way to do it in Russia. The only problem that many Russian scientists actually don't think there's something wrong with captivity. They just don't. So it's very difficult situation in Russia, but I still have hopes that one day Russian orcas will be protected as the orcas here in Washington. Because you guys managed to do it, it just how many? 40 years ago, orcas were captured here, and right now they're protected, they're free and happy, and I'm, I, I believe we can do it in Russia. You asked about the Russian researchers, both Naomi and I know them, um, and if any of you are interested in funding them for equipment and stuff like that, we can put you directly in touch with them because they are desperate for equipment and funding. It's one of the big things that's holding them back. So thank you. The Born to be Free documentary, I think, is going to be, um, it is potentially, you know, Russia's Blackfish. It really is. It's a very, very powerful documentary, um, and it has got a lot of shocking footage in it. Um, the real trick will be to get it shown in Russia, um, which, you know, obviously the filmmakers will be working on. Um, it's already being seen in Europe in the film festival circuit, which is great. It does not yet have a distributor for the U.S., but they'll be working on that as well. So um, it, it does touch on the orcas, but mostly focuses on the belugas, and it really is going to sort of clarify that everything you've been told, everything that the Georgia Aquarium, for example, tried to tell the officials in the U.S., for example, is all wrong, it's all false. Everything they said was false. And um, hopefully it will open a few eyes and it will, it will start a movement. Um, the real problem is, uh, and Oksana could say something about this far more than I can, you know, Russia right now has, you know, a situation where if there's too much outside influence on what the um, citizens groups like VITA, the group that you saw in this um, video, um, if they have too much influence on what those groups do, then they, those groups can get into serious trouble. So we're in a kind of a catch-22 that way, but um, we're certainly doing everything we can to assist those groups to do what they can do on their own um, and just at least get you know, uh, some ideas to them and, and information to them. But um, again, by definition, what's happening with the orcas is unsustainable. By definition, it's unsustainable. And, um, and we're busy in China too, they're the market, so we're going to do what we can in China. But uh, it's very difficult working in these two countries, very difficult. Question? Yes. Uh, in some of the paperwork there was a SeaWorld logo, is that just a rip off of the logo or that had nothing to do with SeaWorld? Right? So, I think it's a Chi Chinese SeaWorld. Ah. Yeah, SeaWorld is planning on expanding into um, the Middle East and China, as we know, and that's where that website was taken from, was, you know, SeaWorld is going to expand into China. Now, they've made this corporate policy that none of their expansion plans will include captive orcas, and I, at the moment, believe them, but again, corporate policy can change. So, they're not going to take any of these Russian orcas, not as a matter of corporate policy at this time. We obviously need to keep them on point with that. But um, it doesn't mean, unfortunately, for example, at Chimelong, they are, they have, um, I think it's a Loro Parque, previous, uh, an employee who used to work at Loro Parque advising them. So they have places they can go to for some expertise, but for the most part, I don't think they have the expertise. 
all of these facilities, these 40 facilities in China that have belugas, I don't think they have enough beluga trainers who know what they're doing. That's why they die. It's a very tricky question because, as Naomi said, uh, Russia, Russian people sometimes react really badly for the Westerners telling them something to do. So what we can do, the ideally what I think would be great is if Russian researchers will learn from Naomi and other scientists from US and other countries and will speak out on their own. Then it will make a huge step. Otherwise, there could be consequences and we don't know how it's going to work. Again, as part of my long-term 20-year plus um, effort, I cultivate acquaintanceships and friendships and collegial relationships with researchers all over the world, you know, Ingrid. Um, I go to the IWC scientific community, I'm a member of that body, and I, I know a lot of cetacean researchers around the world. I know the Russian researchers, as Ingrid pointed out, I know them from the IWC scientific committee. I know um, another researcher, she was in this video, Olga Filatova, she has not been to the scientific committee, but I met her when I was in St. Petersburg. And she is speaking out, actually, and, and, and she's a um, very serious woman. <laughs> Um, and she is speaking out, and I, I don't know that she's not going to get in trouble for it, you know, but um, she is going to these Russian conferences and saying what I just said, which is that we do not have a good population estimate for the orcas in the Sea of Okhotsk, therefore any removal is unsustainable by definition. She is saying that. Now she's keeping it within scientific circles, she's going to scientific conferences and saying that she's not like going to the policymakers, you know, in the Kremlin and, and pounding her shoe on the table, but, but she's not being shy about saying it within scientific circles and it's getting out. Now, whether she'll be silenced or whether she will ever be able to be in a position to say it to policymakers, I don't know. But there are Russian biologists already concerned about these takes. It's just a matter of how much they can do because you can be punished, I'm not sure for speaking out. And when I say punished, and again, um, <laughs> Oksana can say this, but you know, you can just disappear. Yeah, yeah. that's how things work in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, as you can see, all the captures are covered with secrecy. Like, you don't know where the workers are. One day, people can just disappear and no one will know where they are. Well done. Okay, so they're really afraid that people like me are coming in there and taking pictures and that I'm going to show it to people like you. That's, yeah. That's what they're afraid of, London, because they don't want people like you to speak out. And like I said, I'm more than happy to give you my video footage that you can use so you can speak out. Okay? I am also working in Russia, not as much as I would like, but I've been there twice now and I'll go back at some point and obviously Ingrid's been to Russia and, and you know, we're, we're trying. One of the things that was really interesting to me was I gave a talk about this issue, you know, so I basically told members of the public, this is a bad idea, this isn't a good thing for these animals, so, you know, that sort of outreach that we're doing in China and then we're doing here, I did in, in, in Moscow and one of the people who came to the talk, this was at a, an institute that helps um, Moscovites learn English, and so they came and, you know, to listen to an English presentation, and they listened to English pre presentations on anything, you know, on, on forest fires, on anything, you know, and so this was just an interesting subject for them, but they were really there to learn English. This guy came up to me afterwards and he just said, aren't you afraid? This is a citizen of Moscow, just a regular guy, and he just said, aren't you afraid? And I said, afraid of what? Because to me, that's a really weird question. and, and 
Because believe me, of all things I've ever been in the 23 years I've been doing this, afraid, for instance, of SeaWorld, please, you know, no, not terribly. Um, and so, but for him, it was a very serious question. He goes, aren't you afraid? And I said, of what? And he goes, well, of, of SeaWorld. And I said, uh, no, because as an American, I just couldn't even understand what he was saying. But that's the first question he thought of to ask. We have to leave, but just one last thing also, London, so that you know, I had four security guards following me while I was there. Yeah, because I'm such a threat. <laughs>